Now we're going to go into the connective tissues. I think to some extent these are actually a little bit easier than the epithelial tissues. That's just my opinion. And in this course we have six of them. All right. We're first going to look at the three types of cartilage. The first is elastic cartilage. Now, a few things about cartilage that will help you identify it. So, see these things right here? Where my mouse says there's a ton of these. These are called lacuna, or lacunae is the plural. And the lacunae are spaces in which you have cells called chondrocytes. So, I'm actually guessing these little pink regions inside the lacunae, those are the chondrocytes, but they're in a space called a lacunae. All right, you do need to be able to recognize those. In many cases, particularly in elastic and hyaline cartilage, I think they kind of look like a bunch of octopus suckers. So if you actually look at a real octopus's arms, it actually has a ton of suckers on it, and they kind of look like that. So if you actually recognize those lacunae, that tells you it's cartilage. Now the question is, how do you determine what type of cartilage it is? Well, in terms of elastic cartilage, there's two kind of general ways to look at it. The first way, which is kind of a not as good way, because there can be some exceptions, but in general it's usually true. In elastic cartilage, these octopus suckers, or these lacunae, are actually much more dense, and they're more tightly packed. Um, if you look how tightly packed they are in this image versus the next one, hyaline cartilage, um, you'll definitely see that in elastic cartilage, these octopus suckers or lacunae are a lot more tightly packed, more dense. All right, But the better way to tell the difference between elastic and hyaline is that in elastic cartilage, this matrix outside of the lacunae, so every space here that's not occupied by lacunae, is very rough looking in appearance. Even if you look down here, you can tell it looks like there's a lot of scratch marks, all this stuff. So in elastic cartilage, the matrix is a lot rougher. All right. Now in terms of the location, we have elastic cartilage in both the ear and the epiglottis. We won't be looking at the epiglottis until Anatomy and Physiology 2, but you can obviously feel your ears. You hopefully know your ears are made of cartilage, but the specific type is elastic. And if you get confused, think E for elastic, E for ear, and epiglottis. All right. The key with elastic cartilage is we have the lacunae with the chondrocytes and the matrix is rough. In hyaline cartilage, we still have these octopus suckers. We have these lacunae, which you do need to be able to recognize, but notice that the matrix is a lot smoother. If you look outside of these, this looks like a much smoother matrix than it does in elastic cartilage. And that's sort of the giveaway that it's hyaline cartilage. All right? Also in hyaline cartilage, generally speaking, these lacunae are not as tightly packed together. They can be a little bit more sparse, but you should still easily be able to see them. All right. Now, hyaline cartilage you have in your joint cavities. Um, most, um, most joints, with the main exception being the spine, your vertebral column, most joints, all the bones that articulate in that joint are covered in a type of cartilage, which you will see later is called articular cartilage, but its specific type is hyaline cartilage. So for example, if you look in your knees, um, many of you may know about the meniscus in your knee. It's a commonly injured tissue. That is actually hyaline cartilage. It's part of an articular cartilage um, deposit in your knees, but all your joints have it. You also have hyaline cartilage in the ribs, the costal cartilage, which we'll look at in a couple lectures. The nose, your nose is cartilage. That's hyaline. And then also, whenever you develop in utero, you actually don't start out with bone. You start out with an embryonic skeleton made of cartilage, specifically hyaline cartilage, and over time it ossifies into bone. All right. The last type of cartilage also has lacunae. Um, they're not as obvious. Um, they look a little bit different, but you can still usually tell they're lacunae. Here's an example right here where my mouse is on the bottom image. You see here a chondrocyte surrounded in kind of a whitish space. All of these things are lacunae. You can see them up here at the top. Now, fibrocartilage, the lacunae look a little bit different than they did in hyaline and elastic cartilage, but in fibrocartilage, we kind of have sort of what are called striations. So striations are sort of when you have a general appearance of like fibers kind of all going in the same direction. Okay, so notice if you kind of look at it like wisps of a cloud, in this top image, the fibers or striations appear to go from up here, kind of down here, if you follow my mouse, from up here to kind of down there. 
from up here to kind of down there, okay? In the bottom picture, they seem to be going roughly left to right or like right to left, whatever, horizontally. But in fibrocartilage, you do have these striations, which is very important to recognize. You have both the lacunae with the converse sites, but also these striations that generally go in one direction, all right? Now, fibrocartilage, we're gonna see this in two lectures from now, but when we look at the pelvis, the two halves of it, which are called oscoxae, are actually joined by a type of fibrocartilage known as the pubic symphysis. But the more important area where you have fibrocartilage is actually the intervertebral discs, which we'll look at actually in the next lecture in bones. Each vertebra is actually cushioned from the adjacent one by a fibrocartilage deposit called the intervertebral disc. All right, so that's the three types of cartilage. Now we've got three other tissues, which I don't think are actually as bad. These are actually a little bit easier. This is a very easy one to recognize, adipose tissue. This is body fat, all right? Now, if you look at these cells, each one of these white blobs is, is a cell, all right? And these cells, since they're fat cells, they hold a tremendous amount of fat. Um, so they hold triglycerides, cholesterol, all sorts of lipids, just lipids in general. And this entirety, entirety of it, this white, is all lipid. Now, let's, this is a good cell right here where my mouse is. See this purple dot kind of on the exterior by its membrane? See, it's surrounded by the membrane, which is in purple, but this really dark spot, that's its nucleus. With adipose tissue, there's so much fat inside the cell that stores, so much lipid, that literally all the organelles, including this nucleus, are all pushed to the periphery of the cell. So you can't see the other organelles, because most of them are probably too small, but they would all be pushed to the membrane. The nucleus you can see here, and again, it's pushed to the periphery, to the cell membrane, because the lipid droplet inside is so massive. All right. Now, individually, each cell here is called an adipocyte, but this whole thing is adipose tissue, all right? So again, these are really easy to recognize. I like to put this on the test because it's one of my favorite tissues to study, so make sure to watch out for these, um, and pretty much this is just gonna be anywhere where you have fat tissue, all right? This type of tissue is called loose connective tissue, although I actually learned it as areolar, which is another name, it's areolar tissue. You can use either one of these terms, areolar tissue or loose connective tissue. I think in class, most people actually use loose connective tissue. Maybe it's easier to, to remember. But in general, areolar tissue or loose connective tissue looks like a spider web. I include a little image down here from Return of the King, Lord of the Rings. This character gets tied up in a giant spider's web. And that's kind of what areolar tissue looks like. Notice you have all this web-like fibers, and they go in all sorts of directions. Here's another image down here. Now, areolar tissue is one of these tissues kind of like or we looked at goblet cells and cilia or these lacunae, right? So areolar tissue, you have some things you need to know. First of all, these very thick pink fibers, like right where my mouse is, that pink fiber that's kind of going like this, um, they're much thicker in appearance actually in this one, but these thick pink fibers, those are called collagen fibers. So they are collagen. Your textbook calls them collagenous fibers. You can use whatever term you want. Either one is correct. I always call them collagen. That's how I learned it. Also, you see these much thinner purple fibers. Let's see if I can find a good one. Here's one right here, They're kind of going up and down like this. This thin purple fiber, again, there's some down here. Looks like here's a good one right there. My mouse is in the bottom right corner. Those are elastic fibers, although the usual scientific term is elastin, but you can use elastin or elastic fibers, all right? And again, the whole thing just looks like a spider web. You also have cells in here. Here's a mast cell. That's a type of immune cell. Um, we also have other white blood cells. But in general, all these cells collectively, your book calls interstitial cells. So there's actually a few things to know from this. Obviously, that it's areolar tissue or loose connective tissue, but also be able, being able to recognize collagen fibers, elastic fibers, and then the interstitial cells, which are pretty much just all these cells in the tissue. All right, um, and you're typically gonna find loose connective tissue under many kinds of epithelial tissue underneath it, very similar to the picture we saw here, okay? Let's go down and look at the last one, dense regular connective tissue. This is the last one we're gonna look at in this particular course. Dense regular connective tissue looks very similar to fibrocartilage. 
Okay. Now in fibrocartilage, we do have striations, and we also have them in dense regular connective tissue. All of these striations go in the same general direction. You can see here in this one on the bottom left, they're kind of going like this. In this one on the right, they're going left to right or horizontally. In this picture on the top, they're going kind of like this, but they're striations. Um, the, you may see some cells here, but these are not, con these are not chondrocytes in lacuna. All right? These are just simple fibroblasts. All right? Notice that they don't usually have this white surrounding. Um, you'll typically just see them as purple blobs. They won't be surrounded by this kind of white or lightish region around them. So these are not lacunae. These are just simple fibroblasts. All right? And because there's no lacunae, that's how you recognize these as dense regular connective tissue. All right? Now, dense regular connective tissue, one of the common places that you find this is in tendons and ligaments, which we're going to talk about briefly when we do muscle tissue after the first practical. All right, you typically are going to find this tissue where things need to be very, very strong. All right, so again, that's all of the tissues that we're going to look at in this course um, until we get to muscle and nervous tissue later on. But for now, you need to know these 11 tissues. Again, I'm going to say this one more time. When you put the names of these tissue on, tissues on the exam, these lists right here, these are what you need to write, okay? Even if it's a pain, these four words written out, dense regular connective tissue, or in this case, ciliated pseudostratified columnar epithelium, you need to write all of those out, okay? Another important thing to make sure that you do when you're studying these is don't memorize these tissues by their color because the color that you see in the slide depends on the scientist who stained it. There's, there are different stains that you can use for the same tissue, and so the colors may look very different. An obvious example of this is usually seen with the cartilages. Here the cartilage matrix looks kind of pinkish, but here it's very dark. Another example where it's typically observed is actually fibrocartilage. Here they're both kind of pinkish, but this one's much darker. But I remember look, when we looked at this in class, we had one where the matrix was blue. So don't memorize these based on the colors. Memorize these based on the features that each one of these has. All right. So this has been a lecture over histology, the study of tissues. Hopefully this video helped. I will see you in class.